Hi and welcome to this Black Scissors Live bonsai event. I'm sitting here in my garden, a place I love to be with a cup of coffee as I prefer when I'm working with my trees. I will work on some uh, showing trees today and uh, show you a few techniques and some of this seasonal caretaking that is important at this time of the year. I have you can see in the background some larger trees too and uh, I know I'm uh, mostly known for the Shohin but I have larger trees too. But today we will just talk about Shohin. I will not be able to answer your questions live here but you can do your questions on another live session at Bonsai Empire in a few days at the 22nd at the same time. At, that is at the Bonsai Empire page, Facebook page. But today I will make a a little work on my show him and uh, this is springtime here in Denmark up in the north of Europe and uh, therefore the seasonal care will be different than if you live in Italy or you have the flip side of the of the uh, the earth down in Australia it will be autumn I have here at my side a prunus a wild cherry a Danish tree that I have grown for several years it is uh, an ordinary nursery stock. It is just grown from a simple material with a uninteresting bark bought in a nursery for the, in the garden center. It was cut back and I have developed all these branches over the years. What I have to do today, besides drinking my coffee, is taking care of some of this new growth. It has to be cut a bit, not too much, but just adjusted. I had some uh, parts at the top, at the canopy, that I had to develop. It has a tendency to grow very strong at the end of the branches and didn't really take off. And if you can hear cars in between, that is, I'm living on the countryside, but just out here there's a, a road, so in between a car will pass. But as you can see, if I tilt the tree a bit, maybe you can see it. You will have some of these missing branches at the top of the canopy making it a bit flat and i have to adjust this over time managing to uh, have new growth at this place and this means i have to cut some of the lower branches a little more normally you will cut the top heavily because the top is where the growth is strongest but here i have to do it a little bit opposite to force some growth at the top so I get a more round shape at the canopy. Now just see if I can do like this and have these comments off. I can't. I will lift that because I can't see anything on the screen now. But what I'm doing, a car passes, is I take and I'm bringing it a little closer. If you have a shoot like this, you simply cut where you have, I don't know if you can see it, where you have a leaf going in the direction away from the tree. If I cut just above that, like this, a sleeping bud will be at the base of this leaf and the new growing direction will be the same direction. If I cut a little back, it will grow inside the tree and I don't want that because then you just have a clustered canopy with branches going in between each other. So what I'm doing now is simply looking for branches that are too long and too strong and cut them a little back. And if you can see it, it has flowered. You can see the rest, the pieces of the flowers uh, and they might bear some fruit this year. And I have not decided yet if I will keep the fruits or I will uh, take them off because I need some more growth. Sometimes it's just too tempting to have uh, fruits, uh, small cherries on the tree like this because it's beautiful. But every time you have a flower instead of a, a, a growing branch, you will stop the growth. It's not because the flowers and fruits necessarily weaken the tree, but it just takes up the space for new growth. So if you want new growth, remove every flower and every fruit. It all depends on what you want to do, what is the purpose of the training you are doing with the tree. 
for now I will leave them because they are placed in a lower position and maybe if you think, think very uh, strategically like a, a play of chess if I leave some fruits that will stop growth at these points where they actually appears then I will force the growth that is happening at the places where there are no fruits and no flowers so I can actually use by leaving the fruits back here to stop the growth here and let this grow freely and this way balance the growth. It's all, all a matter of balance and it is not about the tree, tree get, uh, getting weak because of fruits. It's simply a matter of balance of growth. So I will not prune the top at this time. I'll do it a little bit later because when I prune this part I will let this grow freely and this will get stronger and this is exactly what I want. So let's get on with it. Always cutting so you have a leaf going downwards or outwards, never in the middle. And here I have a shoot going directly upwards. I've removed that. I'm going to take this one, shorten it and take the top leaf off. And here is some top rows. And I will take a bit of that off because this is the part I want to strengthen. And as you can see, this is really, really simple work. Nothing, nothing big with wiring or dramatic pruning, but this is the important work that you have to do during the season. And you have to know when to do it. And this will go on throughout the season. I'll have to go back to this tree several times and adjust it little by little. But it is a small tree. It only takes a few minutes. And uh, Worth mentioning when we're at it, uh, what I really like when doing bonsai is I like to do something with primitive material. And I don't, I don't necessarily mean something uh, rubbish or, or bad material, but something simple that I can style myself. It takes some years and I never, I never go back to, yeah, I had done it. <laughs> I'm just uh, saying something I shouldn't say. I have done a few trees from cuttings or seedlings, but it's very few and they are very small. Because if you want to grow something like this, you can waste 5 or 10 years just to grow it from seedling to something primitive that not uh, even is something. So instead, jump over that, buy a pre bonsai material of some kind, or you can even go to a nursery or find something in a garden. This was found in a nursery, it was nothing at all. I just needed a trunk that I could form, cut it back and grow all these branches over the years. But what is impressive with this tree, besides that I love the flowers and the fruits, is this kind of trunk that you are able to make with patience. It takes a lot of time and we can turn it around. It originally had another front, it actually had this front years ago and there was some dead wood up here that I liked at that time. I don't like it anymore. I like the other front because I like this part of the root. But it could go this way as well. It's a matter of taste. And this is really old and it takes a long time to achieve this and you do not really achieve <coughs> sorry you not, do not really achieve uh, this kind of bark and this kind of nebari without having a lot of patience and taking the time it takes. It just takes years. And this is what I really like about bonsai is that every year I can spot a little bit of a difference. I think at a time I forgot about this tree for five years or so, not that I didn't take care of it, I did, but I forgot to look at it. And suddenly all of this began to appear, the old bark with the small cracks and this uh, wonderful the movement of the branches and even when when the branches get even this thick uh, or cracky old bark that's when you get this kind of wabi-sabi feeling that is uh, so appreciated in bonsai and uh, sometimes you forget to see these things at exhibitions you have maybe a very impressive trunk and you have a lot of branches but they don't have this kind of age and it just takes time uh, and of course you don't see it all the time because it uh, has to be started years ago. 
And is there much more to say about this? I cannot do much more work than this. This was cutting a few branches. Next week I will look at it again, maybe cut one or two. And during the season I will slowly develop it. So let's take another one. And I have a table full, you can't see it, but I have a table full of trees. And I'll pull this over here. <coughs> and take uh, another tree. And I I think I have this with me at the Bonsai Empire stand maybe a last year or the year before to show you. This is a uh, a uh, Cressa Egos, a hawthorn with red flowers. And it will not flower this year. It has been wired, it is totally wired and I have to take it off. I will not do that today I think because it's just slow and boring work to look at. But the wire has to go off now. It was wired in the autumn. The best time to wire the citrus tree is just when the leaves drop and when you cut off the last leaves. You still have a bit of sap inside the branches. They're still flexible and you can wire them without breaking them. Of course you have to take care, especially with a tree like this where the branches are quite stiff and they might uh, suddenly snap and you have a branch that is, uh, is dead. So the best time to wire the cities is when the leaves goes off in autumn. You could do it during summer, but you can't see anything because it's full of leaves. You can also wire them during winter. You just have the problem that at that time the sap flow is stopped and uh, the branches are much more fragile to bending. They snap much easier. So the best time is autumn or just before the leaves open in spring when the sap flow starts. But you have to know each of your tree and what they cope. And coffee. It's a little bit the same as the tree before. I have to adjust some of the growth. And you have here uh, an evidence of the growth being very strong at the top. As you can see, all of these strong shoots at the top of the tree, they have to go. and. We cut back simply to adjust the energy of the tree. If you actually any kind of tree with a few exceptions have this apical dominance that all the growth goes in the top, a little less at the tips, at the branches, at the ends, and much less at the lower parts of the trees and the inner side of the tree. So in order to have a balanced tree uh, in good shape and in a, a good growth condition you have to always balance this energy throughout the tree and this counts for not any kind of tree i will take a uh, shimpaku juniper <coughs> in a minute and show you how that is a bit different here i have to let a car pass it's gone and then take the top rows here and cut back and it is the same principle i cut it back to two or three leaves and i will bring it a little closer to you like this. Here's a very strong shoe, so I go back to two pair of leaves and secures the one leaf is going away from the canopy and not inside. If you have an empty space inside, you could choose a shoe to go in that direction. So again, I'll go through the tree and cut the tops here. And while you're doing this, you will at the same time be able to see if there should be any kind of uh, fungus or pest that already has started to attack the tree. But that is not the case at the moment. But as soon as it gets warmer, it is it's okay temperatures these days. It has shifted from uh, six months of rain to yeah, now it's sunshine all the time. So it's either rain or sunshine. You can pick one. What it means for the tree is that it grows very well. It gets it gets sun, and it like it. Uh, and uh, I just have to water once or twice a day to secure the health. I have not started to fertilize yet because it is not warm enough. It is between. If you can hear some oh noise here besides the birds, it is a horse passing by with some girls. I can hear. What was I was saying, I was saying I have not started to fertilize yet because it's not warm enough and the tree will not take up the nutrients. I wait to the temperature rises to around 15 degrees Celsius 
in the daytime, but it is around 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. When the sun is up, it is uh, hotter, but I wait a little. And the second thing about waiting with fertilizing is if you fertilize too early with a deciduous tree, you push the growth and it will get simply too long. And you have these long spaces between each pair of leaves, the internodes, and that will make it very difficult to keep it as a small tree, as a showing. So after the first set of leaves have hardened off and get darker green, that is the time to begin feeding and to strengthen the tree. But wait until then, else you will have this long and uh, sloppy uh, shoot that is unusable for a shohan bonsai and also for larger trees, I think. Uh, but, but wait until the temperature is a little bit higher. And I take a little bit of the lower shoots as well, just not as much as at the top. I leave more leaves. So I'm always thinking about balancing the energy and cutting. So I have a leaf going downwards, so the new growth will go down and outwards. And uh, another important thing is to let light inside the middle of the tree, so you can constantly grow new branches from the inside. If it is totally covered with leaves, like if I do so with my hand shades, it shades out all the possibilities of new growth inside. And you want to renew the growth all the time to be able to keep a tree small. You always cut away the longest growth and go down to the next level where new growth comes. And by this you can uh, regrowth the tree over and over until it at a time is going to be too big to stay as a shohin. And let's just for the fun of it control the size of a shohin mo mostly most know the size of the showing that it is a maximum of 20 centimeters and that is to be taken a little bit uh, relaxed because it all has to do with its fitting in the racks and in the showing exhibitions but at exhibitions there are rules and uh, depends who the organizer is these rules can change but let's check this one and it goes from the rim of the pot to exactly 21 centimeters, so it's a little bit too big. It's one centimeter too much, but it doesn't matter. It's not uh, important to, to hit it exactly. And if it flowers, the flowers will be extending the size a little bit and you don't count that in. So take it a little bit, relax, but go uh, to approximately the 20 centimeters. I, I'm not sure I have ever heard about anyone going around with a measurement and say this tree is out. It is about having the feeling of the shohin size, uh, and shohin means a little thing in Japanese. And here I have a few more to cut. And uh, remember always to use very sharp scissors so you do not uh, tear off the branch but cut it off so you have no diseases. And here I have a branch growing a little bit upwards and it could be tempting for me to begin to wire this in position and just make it neat at this time but another thing with, with uh, growing bonsai is everything has a time to do it. it everything has a purpose why are you doing it and when are you doing it sometimes you are just the gardener to keep the tree alive feed it well water it well and uh, secures its growth at other times you are the artists that are creative and uh, make maybe something spectacular or just beautiful. And we all have different tastes, what is spectacular and what is beautiful. But what I really wanted to say is, if I begin to wire just this one branch, I risk the life of this branch by maybe 50%, depending on how strong it is and how healthy it is. But as a sample of rule, never wire a few branches on a tree, wire the full tree, because if you weaken one branch or five branches in opposition to maybe 50 other branches, you will weaken that part and you might risk them die off with 50% or something like that. You can uh, get away with it if you if you know the tree very well and you know the sap flow is, is good at that part of the tree and it has showed sign of being very strong at that part, then maybe you can just do it. But as a, 
the main rule don't wire a few branches wire all the tree because then you also every time you wire a branch and bend it a little bit in position you are weakening it because you're bending the cells and you're breaking some of the tissue inside that is unavoidably and unavoidable and thereby you hurt it a little bit so if you only hurt one leg you will have to limp if you hurt both legs you have to crawl and then then it is equalized if you understand what i mean you just have to weaken all branches at the same time so you have the same kind of energy in all the branches so they stay alive weaken just half of them then you risk those to die because the strong ones will take over and take all the energy from the weak part you have weakened by wiring that might be over explained but i hope you understand and not a lot much more to do on this one except taking off the wire uh, but it's too boring for you to look at so i will save that for a bit later for tomorrow or something let's take a look at another tree uh, just another thing yeah let's take uh, a japanese maple like this one and this is actually whoops Nearly, yeah, let that one go, it's a wild thing. This is exactly the same species. It's a Japanese maple, and it is uh, the same specimen. And for some reason, this one leaves out two or three weeks before this one. And this one follows some of the other trees, but this is also the, uh, always very early. And uh, that can be just uh, genetic there's nothing uh, to prove that is different when the leaves comes out it's exactly the same color and size so it's just uh, born like this it wants to leave out earlier and you can see that if you walk in the forest you can see trees that are leafing out before others it can has it can have to do with the specific uh, place they are in they can get the most uh, part of the sun they can be sheltered by the other trees and being warmer but it can also just be genetic that and it is if you look after it if you have a forest nearby you always walk again you will see that it is the same trees every year that starts before the other ones let's put this one aside and now we go to this one that is just leafing out and here are two techniques we can use on this one but the one thing is and i have to get very close to the camera i hope you can see it because uh, these are two of the early spring techniques that are very important the one is to take out the middle shoot that is uh, when, when the leaves open there comes two pairs of leaves at the same time and you, as you can see here we have a pair of leaves here and we have a new shoot here and what i will do is take the middle out when it's soft and when do by doing this you have these two leaves that divides and this way you will get the growth to divide and you will get a much more interesting and much more uh, ramificate i can't say that in english a much better ramification when you divide each branch instead of it growing long and away from the tree and i had some kind of insect in my coffee off it goes the next thing is especially with shohin bonsai you want to keep the internodes the distance between each pair of leaves as short as possible so you get a, a good density of growth and this is a technique that is used when the tree already is matured some i have used several years this has been a, a pre-bonsai i bought in japan as a very simple tree i had to cut up cut off some branches and uh, grow a lot of them again and this is actually the first time i begin to use this technique uh, every uh, spring because now i need to shorten all of these uh, internode so it gets short and compact why didn't i do that so much before because i need to thicken the branches and the only way you can thicken branches is let letting the ends grow when they grow the inner part will thicken up to support the outer growth it's just thicken as it grows 
if you always keep it short, it will take a very long time for the inner parts to thicken. So the strategy up till now has to has been to thicken the inner branches so they are more natural looking instead of you just have a trunk with a lot of equally thin branches with leaves at the end. That will be not a bonsai but a, a trunk with some leaves. So what I have to do now is pinching the few of them that is already having this middle shoot growing out and now we go to the important point of how to shorten the internodes. If you look very carefully at the Japanese maple you can see for each year there is a small ring where the growth before has stopped and if you see a different distance between these if it's very short it has either been pinched very hard and grown and been growing very slowly and if it is long it simply has been strong it can be due to too much watering it can just be because you let it grow or has overfed it giving a lot of fertilizer so again i will not fertilize this tree until the leaves have hardened off and changed the color and you know they are now going into the second stage where a new pair of leaves will go out then you can begin to fertilize and at that time you can also defoliate the full tree and get an even even denser ramification but what i am of <laughs> all the time avoiding to tell you that I really wanted to tell you is that at the base of each leaf in spring and only in spring there is a thin layer of protecting leaves that has been sitting there from autumn developed in autumn to protect the bud that has overwintered and now at this time if you pull this little shed off then the very soft and very fragile shoot will dry out you could say or it's better to say harden off a little bit earlier and stop the uh, the growth so it will not be so long so i will see if we can do the trick and go close i don't know if you can see it but at each of these and i cannot do it at all of them the sitting a little bit of a leaf here as yet and I just pull it off, draw it back again, pull it backwards, pull it off and then it will stop growing as long as it would if I didn't do it. And this is a little bit of timely work and you can do that by controlling it daily just when you're watching your trees or just before make it a routine to look after this and pull it up pull it off I, I support it with my fingers tip of the growth so I don't break it and just pull it gently off and because not all of these leaves will grow at the same time at the same speed you have to do this not every day but two or three times a week until you are a true the tree and they are really tiny and pull them backwards and they are as small as this so you have not to shake too much at your fingers and I would just go through the tree and secure I get what I can today and then tomorrow or the day after I will take the next one and here is a dead little piece that has to go and here and for this you need a cup of coffee and uh, some good glasses because uh, this can be difficult to see and another thing is when you have again i want to split every branch so i have this good ramification and i have here a middle shoot that is a bit too strong to pull off so i just cut it off but unless you want that shoot to elongate to thicken some of the branches because again this is about what you're doing at what time and why you're doing it if it is a the purpose is to train a tree that is already mature and good 
good development, then you can make this finer detail work. If you need to make some uh, parts stronger, you have to let something grow to strengthen that part. And again, this is all about the energy in the tree. Keep the same volume of growth at each part of the tree. And you have to know your tree to know if it has some weak spots. If you have a weak spot, then prune a little bit harder at the strong parts to push over the energy to the weaker spots. And at this time, I will also clean out any dead twigs, dead branches from the winter. And these will always appear. They have, maybe they are shaded out from the year before, or I have cut them during the summer to shorten some branches and left them just to die off slowly and naturally in order not to hurt the tree. And at this time, I will not wire any branches because I will risk damaging all of these fragile shoots if I begin to wire a tree like this at this stage. They are simply too fragile and I will, I will ruin the tree. So again, do it in the autumn when the leaves are dropping and you're cutting off the last leaves. You still have a little bit of sap in the branches, they are still flexible and you can wire them and let them stay over the winter. You can wire again, repeat myself, in winter, but then the branches are more fragile and might break easily. Let's go to a juniper. No, let's go to two junipers. I have to have some coffee too. Let's just go. So, excuse me for a moment, but this is important. When I do bonsai, I have to enjoy myself. I don't want it to be something like a job, not because I have a bad job, but I just want this to be joy. So I take the time it takes and uh, enjoy my trees and, and like just sitting and watching them from time to time too. Just taking a small tree like this, putting it on the table, taking a cup of coffee or a glass of wine, and just look at this, is something I think we have to remember and we have unfortunately more time or some have at these trouble times so do what makes you happy and uh, use some time on it so this is a juniper a classical juniper as you can buy them yeah hi <laughs> something happens with some bicycles and a car no one is hurt, I can assure you. But this is a classic juniper, uh, not a Shimpago, but a probably an Ituigawa. There are some difference. Uh, they are a little bit lighter in the needles and a little bit softer and a little bit longer, where Shimpago is very compact. And these come in big numbers. What I have done is I have carved the dead wood uh, quite much. It was uh, just a soft and smooth deadwood and I think you can see it in one of my videos at YouTube I'm not sure but I, at that time I carved it but I didn't hollow it out and I just found I wanted to make this tree uh, more interesting and more special than just having some deadwood so because it was uh, prepared to have deadwood at both sides it was possible simply to carve through it and make it maybe even more interesting by having this space in the center so you can look through it uh, if you like it or not uh, and one piece i like is this like it goes with this brick so i have pre-styled it and uh, i need to give it some lime sulfur I have it had it once uh, and I will give it again and before I add this I will just uh, tell you a little bit about the difference of the Itoigawa juniper and the common junipers, the juniper is uh, chinensis that you can uh, get uh, at least around here in Denmark. This is a, so this is a important piece bought in uh, a bonsa nursery and uh, it was much more, much bigger in the foliage, and I have uh, reduced that, and I have styled the tree in the way I want. 
this is a different approach to bonsai this is a very simple nursery material just bought in a garden nursery uh, and i was looking for something uh, it's much older than this one because this one was bought three years ago two or three years ago and started last year this one i bought maybe 15 years ago as a small piece from an, a nursery and this is the Genesis version and the difference in uh, the growth of these two is the Itoigawa and the Shimpaku junipers they tolerate all the branches to be bent down and they will still get the strength to grow upwards and it will weaken the branches a little when you grow them downwards you could do that on purpose uh, if you want to weaken a, a strong part you can actually bend the tree the the branches more than you do at a part where you have a weaker part so you can balance the energy again by bending the branches more where, where it is too strong and letting the other branches grow up a bit and then they will get stronger so you're always a matter of balance you cannot do that with the very much with the chinensis it doesn't tolerate it you always have to think about the needles going a little bit upwards because if you force them down they risk to die so you cannot make the same dramatic movement in a uh, common juniper like this one that you can with the Itoigawa so there is a gross difference and another difference that is a little bit less is that the Itoigawa or the Shimpaku juniper have all the energy in the tips of the branches and the same goes for this one but what you do here is you let the tips grow they are not beginning to grow so much it's not visible at this time but i let them grow during the next month or two and elongate because that draws up and keeps the sap flow through the branches and out to the needles and taking up the nutrients and keeping up the photosynthesis but only by letting the tips grow a little too long before you cut them back to the base you will keep a healthy tree if you cut them all the time if you pinch them you will stop the growth you will weaken the tree and it will maybe not die but it will weaken a lot and you will not get any kind of inner growth the trick is to let these ends grow and get light inside all the branches here and if you let the tips grow they drag up the energy so new growth will appear inside if you pinch out here you will not get the same amount of growth inside here where lights and air comes in with the ordinary juniper here it is a little bit different because it doesn't have the same strong end growth it is smaller and it is weaker so here i cut away just the small pieces like this one around the tree in almost the same amount of each branch that I know have the same strengths. So that is a little bit different approach to pruning where the Shimpago or the Itoigawa juniper shows it with long and strong growth. This does it very little and it also has a tendency to get these like a little bit juvenile foliage not juvenile but weak growth that is uh, doing nothing else but doing a little bit of photosynthesis but uh, when we're doing bonsai we don't want this we want the small leaves that has some uh, what would you call it uh, more needles in a bunch so you have these uh, nice foliage pads but again always keeping it open and wait cutting any new growth back until it has matured a bit and harden a little off and that will be around in Denmark here it will be depending now the weather has been uh, warmer and hotter than normal so it will maybe be at the end of May or mid of June depends it can change the weather can change all the time and let's take a look at one of my newer things and that is a small Shohin Forest. It is in my book. I have just published the book here in in March. 
March 1st, late February, and it was released. And uh, I made some bonsai forest. I have another one by very simple material with the uh, Acer Camp pasture and uh, the field maple. And they're growing very strongly, all of them. And it is very simple seedlings found in a forest actually at our own ground and they just uh, we have the trees uh, here and you can i can find seedlings of these all over they actually grows very strong so i have cut them put them in a pot and making now a small forest so this was done a year ago <coughs> sorry this was done a year ago and what uh, until now I have done nothing to them, just let them grow. And I cut off one tree here because it was too much and uh, there's so much life in it that it's uh, sprouting with two of these small ones. So maybe I will let them be part of it. At uh, this time there are 11 trunks and plus these it is 13 if they are let to grow. The number is uneven simply because it is easier to make it look natural with an uneven number. If you hear anybody say that it has to be an uneven number, there can be some... I, I don't know, so, some people believe that it means something special with different numbers and they do in Japan too, but uh, I don't care. If you have four trunks and it look good, use it. But it's just far more easy to use an even num an uneven number and making it look good and natural. And that is what it's about. It has to look natural. So what I have to do at this time is to clean out and shorten some of this. I just have to turn it to myself and see. I have a shoot going up here that is simply too strong. And instead I can let another one take over but I don't want to shorten this too much because this has to be the top tree so off it goes and new ones will appear then I have and actually it is exactly the same thing as with the Japanese maples when you have these small sheds sitting at the first pair of leaves that has uh, taken protected the leaf over winter it is time to take it off and it is absolutely it's much more visible here so I will bring it close to the, the phone and see if you can see I hope you can I drag this one off it's a little bit more difficult when I have to hold it like this here it goes and this will make this shoot stop growing as strongly as it does now by pulling this off like that then it becomes shorter and more compact and this is a good time to do this work and if you are too late with it yeah then it's too late it can be uh, these kind of things is <coughs> sorry it's a matter of uh, days and sometimes uh, it is a matter of hours it can change from the morning to the afternoon how the development is and the effect will be lost if you not, are not doing it at the right time. So maybe tomorrow some of this work will be waste because the shoot has already grown too much at that time. And this is some of the tedious work you have to do when you work with Shohin. And if you don't have too many of them, it will not take a lot of time. And here we go. And I actually think the the idea with the, the small forest has succeeded. I think I get the impression of a small forest already, even if these are very young trees and they was just planted in a pot last year. I think we have this kind of feeling of a forest uh, looked at at a distance and that is also one of the aspects of bonsai you're making an image of a tree you have to visualize what are you doing and when you are shaping your tree you have to shape it like 
where you're looking at it from. Is it something like this that I could, when I take a walk nearby, see uh, at a bit of a distance, I will have the impression of a little forest and not a forest of 11 or 13 trees, but a forest with maybe hundreds of trees. But this is just a simple expression and vi uh, visualization of a piece of land with the forest. And you have to imagine all the other things, if there are cornfields around or it is uh, bushy, is it at a, a coast, coastal line? And I could see if we use our imagination just a little bit, this might be a small island with uh, some trees on it, uh, like you could see in our neighbor country, Sweden or Norway, uh, or in Denmark. Uh, it could give this kind of summer feeling of when it is in leaf, when you pass by a river or something with a few trees on. Well, this one maybe is representing a larger piece of land. But all of that you have to, to visualize up here if you have some fantasy. And here we go, pulling these off and being very careful not to ruin this very fragile shoot inside the middle of it. And, and they are hiding very well. And they are bigger than at the Japanese maple and the Amo maple, the field maple, is also growing much stronger than the Japanese maple. It is maybe a little bit less delicate in its leaf structure, the leaves are a little bit more, what would you say, a little bit more coarse in their growth and, and not uh, this, uh, maybe you could even say they have a little bit a more masculine uh, uh, appeal than where the Japanese maple is a little bit more feminine and elegant. But that's how you look at it. So this part is done and I will go over it again the next days. And what I will do now is clean up the growth that grows inside, in the middle, in the shadow of the trees, because when you look at a bonsai or a bonsai forest, you have to imagine where come, where, where do you have the sun? The sun maybe comes from here and the uh, light will stop where the canopy shades out the middle of the tree. So it will be unnatural to have any growth that is very low at, or at the inside of a tree like this, like if on a forest. So I clean that off. So we only have foliage of the two third upper parts of the tree and not at the lower third, approximately. But you should never divide it in half so you have all the leaves ma leaf, leaf mass at the 50% top of the tree and nothing at the, 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 the half below the middle. So if you divide it in the middle, you will have this, again, unnatural uh, feeling and uh, uh, more like a man-made thing. And we have to, in my opinion, make something that we are not thinking very much about. Someone has done it, although we know they have. but. I remember visiting uh, Tomio Yamada in, uh, at the Saiko M nursery in Japan and I think still this is the place where I was mostly imp most impressed by the naturalness of the trees where I didn't think about a single tree was made by him. I just saw the trees and looked at them as trees and forgot about time and space. Die? Okay, I just have to stop and turn the camera up. So. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm back. And uh, I was just told that the camera, for some reason, was not pointing right. And I thought I had. But what I will do, I will end this video now. And I will be back on uh, the 22nd at Bonsai Empire. But what I will do, I will try to edit this and turn the picture around so you get it in the right direction and then you can maybe watch it better in that direction. And I say thank you for watching and I apologize for this inconvenience, but let's try and see if I can fix that. Thank you for watching 
I will be back and uh, during this time I will try to send some more live because this was fun to do and I hope you will watch it later and I'll see if I can do anything right at that time with the camera. Thank you for watching.